Last week, the Biden administration announced it would tap former President Trump appointee Elliot Abrams to join the U.S. Advisory Commission on Public Diplomacy. He was one of eight Republicans handpicked to serve on the bipartisan commission. Some see the decision as controversial because Elliot was famously convicted for lying to Congress over the Iran-Contra affair. Moreover, he is associated with facilitating and covering up human rights violations in Latin America when he worked for the Reagan administration. Here to discuss the details of Biden's latest appointment is Bronco Markatic, a staff writer for Jacobin and the author of Yesterday's Man, The Case Against Joe Biden. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. So what should our viewers know about this figure, Elliot Abrams? I mean, I don't like to throw the word evil around, but I mean, he, Elliot Abrams really is one of the most just unambiguously vile, you know, you might say evil people uh, that, that has worked in Washington. I mean, this is a guy who his entire uh, uh, job when he was in the Reagan administration was to cover up uh, human rights abuses by the uh, the Contras and, 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 and military forces of these uh, right-wing governments in Central America that the Reagan administration was uh, supporting, uh, and and to make sure that that uh, military aid was going to them uh, in order to, to you know, uh, not only to, to roll back uh, uh, left-wing influence in the region, but in the process, you know, they, they were carrying out pretty sickening human rights uh, uh, violations that... People can go look them up if they want to see the details. It's not really worth going into here. I mean, aside from that, and aside from uh, subsequently lying to Congress about it, uh, he's also been a guy who's uh, been involved in, in coup attempts in other countries, Venezuela famously in 2002, kind of gave the nod to, to that attempt against Hugo Chavez, again, was involved years later uh, under the Trump administration to try and foment regime change against uh, Maduro this time, of course Maduro, Chavez's successor. Um, he was involved reportedly in an attempt uh, within the Bush administration to foment a civil war in the Palestinian territories um, after the 2006 elections did not go the way that the Bush administration went and, and, and put Hamas in power uh, in Gaza. Um, and, you know, he's a guy who has very vocally supported uh, uh, regime change efforts that didn't happen, but, you know, it could still be on the cards. I mean, he was uh, saying that basically uh, the U.S. should, if, if, you know, some of the kind of uh, uh, more covert stuff didn't work, uh, should just basically invade Nicaragua or do a blockade to try and uh, topple its government. He was saying uh, uh, the same thing about Iran as well, uh, that, that, you know, if Iran... Um, uh, 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 gets close to developing a nuclear weapon, the U.S. should just uh, bomb it. So, you know, I mean, really every single part of his record, which I've only given you a tiny sliver of here, uh, really makes a, a complete mockery of all the rhetoric that the Biden administration has been using on the world stage uh, uh, of the past, you know, year, if not, if not the entire term. Yeah, I mean, I've seen... Uh, kind of a left-wing pushback against some of Joe Biden's appointments and other kind of political choices over the last few years. And usually there are, there's a chorus of defenders, people who are close to the administration, insiders, establishment actors, who defend Joe Biden's choices. Uh, this time, there seems to be a more uh, un unanimous pushback from folks who even, you know, people who are very fond of Joe Biden and the job that he's been doing as president are, are kind of scratching their heads and asking why he's made this particular choice. And I want to ask you what you make of this decision. Do you think Joe Biden underestimated the level of pushback, uh, objection he would get up over around this appointment? Or do you think that this reflects um, an ideological commitment from Joe Biden that people should be really concerned about? I mean, number one, uh, my initial reaction still is, I don't really know what the calculus here, the political calculus is, uh, uh, there's no real gain uh, uh, to this. You know, it's a, it's a highly uh, publicity uh, uh, triggering uh, uh, appointment because Elliot Abrams is, is so on and has such a terrible record and was also part of the Trump administration, but he's also being put in a role that, you know, at least from what's been said, it, it's not a particularly, uh, uh, I mean, anyone could have taken this role. They're, they're, dozens, if not hundreds of people in Washington that that would be happy to kind of basically uh, shape 
US propaganda efforts overseas uh, uh, for the sake of, of undermining governments that are unfriendly to the United States, which is what the, the US uh, Public Commission uh, on, on, on Public Diplomacy is. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's about, you know, it's about propaganda and kind of public relations messaging um, uh, for US interests on the world stage. So I'm not really sure what they gain from it, aside from this really terrible news cycle. But I mean, to what you were saying right there, I mean, I think it does point to a very uncomfortable fact about the Biden administration. I mean, we were told that this was going to be a break from Trump, that it was going to kind of confirm that the Trump administration was an aberration, that it had nothing to do with American political tradition, and that, you know, the Democrats were going to take um, uh, U.S. foreign policy and government into a more kind of competent human rights and democracy focused uh, direction. And I mean, the, the truth is that there's actually a, a fairly um, worrying influence of, of neoconservatives in the Biden administration. And I don't just mean people who are kind of liberal interventionists, such as uh, Jake Sullivan and Tony Blinken, but, but outright neocons, people like, uh, like Victoria Nuland, who basically is, um, is, is running <laughs> Ukraine policy uh, under Biden, as she, she was to a lesser extent under Obama. Um, and I think the, the lack of attention to the neocon influence uh, uh, in the Biden administration um, is kind of one of these, these underreported stories or these stories that don't really get that much attention, um, even though, you know, we were all appalled at the foreign policy of, uh, of Trump and then uh, George Bush before him. Does this show that um, liberals, Democrats, the mainstream, they are keen to rehabilitate anyone as long as that person had kind of like a personal dislike of Donald Trump. I, you know, I'm seeing that he was quoted as saying that he thought, even though he served, Elliot Abrams, even though he served under Trump, he thought Trump was not fit to be president and continued to think that and especially thought that after January 6th, that kind of thing, where someone's, you know, substantive foreign policy positions and agenda can be totally papered over if, you know, they find Trump as icky as establishment figures in Democratic circles do? I mean, that's definitely a phenomenon that's that's been a thing uh, since Trump got elected. I, I don't really see it so much here. Um, I mean, actually, to be honest, I haven't seen any uh, uh, administration defense or explanation of this so far. I mean, it's been reported and it's made a lot of news and a lot of people have been very angry about it, but I haven't seen anyone, and maybe, maybe I just haven't seen it, but I, I haven't seen anyone actually saying, well, this is why Elliot Abrams deserves to be in here. And I think a uh, big part of the reason for that is because his appointment is really indefensible, not just on, on moral grounds, but even just on, on, on political grounds. Um, I, I would love to see, you know, if there was a, a uh, White House pool reporter or, you know, uh, one of the reporters that, that, that uh, asked questions of the State Department uh, on a regular basis, I'd love if they were able to put the question of what exactly is going on with this decision and why on earth would they pick someone with a, a record this horrendous um, uh, to be anywhere near U.S. foreign policy, We're, even if this is just running propaganda operations overseas, someone like this should not be, you know, as I put it in the, in the piece, should not even be washing dishes in the White House. Yeah, I mean, it does speak to a kind of impunity. I, I said earlier that there have been, there's been left pushback to any number of Biden uh, appointments in the past, um, uh, whether it's just the near Tandon uh, back and forth that was a, a, a lot about her substantive politics, but also her interpersonal politics and her attitude toward the left, um, whether it's uh, appointing a former Raytheon executive as Secretary of Defense. I mean, there have been these you know, what are you doing moments from the broader liberal Democratic Party and left community about what Joe Biden does. But it does seem like the vote blue no matter who ethos quickly makes it so that no substantive criticism should stick. So just as we wrap here, I want to ask you, as someone who's, you know, expert on these matters, I wonder if you've reflected on the other candidates in the primary fields of both parties uh, and made any kind of decisions uh, analysis about which of them seem to offer a real departure from the neocon core of both establishment parties? I mean, uh, the Democratic field is pretty depressing. Um, I mean, there's many criticisms one can and, and, and I certainly have made of the Biden administration foreign policy. 
uh, you know, RFK says a lot of the good things uh, that, that that sound kind of reasonable in foreign policy. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, that comes with a poison pill of all these other kind of positions they take, not just on vaccines, but, you know, I, I'm not really particularly inspired by his very tepid kind of support for Medicare for all that, that you guys kind of extracted from him um, and, and a whole, whole host of other domestic policy issues. Marion Williamson, um, you know, has impressed me on domestic policy, but um, uh, I think uh, in terms of, of foreign policy, I... I there's not that much daylight between what Biden is doing and, and, and what she's saying, at least from what I've seen so far. I wish there was more of an emphasis on, you know, sure, you can support military aid to, to Ukraine, but the, the real emphasis that has to be put is on, on, on peace efforts. So, so far, no one really um, is, is impressing me too much. But I think, you know, that, that uh, points to the need to uh, not just kind of wait for a candidate or a politician to... to say and do the things that, that, that we hope that they would, but to actually exert some sort of pressure, whether it's on these uh, primary challenges or on, on the Biden administration itself to, to take a, you know, a, a more reasonable, uh, you know, more humane uh, approach to foreign policy. Mm. Bronco Marchatich, thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. Thanks.